Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. So um, thank you for coming and spending a portion of your evening with us. I'm Adna. I'm not called Creative Mental Network. That's not my name. Um, we've got a bit of a jam-packed evening today. So I hope you guys are excited um, for what we've got in store. Before we get started, just some like housekeeping. Um, there is going to be a Q&A portion at the end. So if you've got any questions, um, just pop them in the chat. I'll promise that we'll get to most of the questions. Um, throughout well not throughout but if you post your questions throughout we'll get to them at the end um, and you can ask questions um, generally or to the interns or to Charlotte and everyone um, and I guess yeah just make sure you're on mute um, just remember that your questions will be answered at the end um, and yeah making sure you're mute is really important because it will kind of disrupt the flow of things um, and yeah so essentially this session you're going to meet um, some of interns that are currently on the program um, and they're going to kind of talk to you about their day-to-day -day, the kind of process of applying um, and some like tips and tricks I uh, will also hear a little bit from Charlotte who's the talent acquisition manager um, and as I said there'll be a Q&A portion at the end um, so I'll stop talking now and I'm going to pass over to Charlotte who as I said is a talent uh, junior talent acquisition manager at Sony Music uh, and she's going to kick off the rest of the event to us. Thank you, Adna. I just want to check, can everyone just see my screen? You can't see everybody's face in the screen. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, well, thank you so much for, for joining today, guys. Um, we're really excited to share some valuable information about our internship programme today and what it's like to actually work at Sony Music at this level, because it's really difficult to find out um, just on Google or, you know, on social media so hopefully this will give you some good insight um like i say we're going to focus on our current cohort um today so um yeah we'll be diving into their day to day but i just want to give you a little bit of context first on what the internship program actually is um so the program is 12 months long um the i just think it's supposed to be on there um, so yeah, it's 12 months long and it begins in January 2023 and it will run from until January 2024, which is crazy to think. Um, and that, you know, the process of, of applying and interviewing is pretty long. And that reason is because it's it's a, a very competitive process and, and there is a, quite a small team at Sony in recruitment. So it's just a little bit longer because we're recruiting 30 different roles um, it takes that amount of time to get everyone through uh, at the same time and hired and ready to start in January. So like I said, we've got quite a few different roles across the business. Um, so they're in different labels as well as central teams across the building. Um, if you're not already aware of how a major label is set up, it's a little bit like an umbrella and you know things like what well, when people sign artists they get signed to specific labels that sony music has within it so for example columbia records you know we've got different artists signed specifically to columbia rather than signed just to sony music um so we've got the teams that work directly for sony as well as the labels um, and they service the whole business across multiple different areas um, the types of roles that we've got coming up this year, um, they span across label marketing and digital marketing as well. We've got label promotions um, and then more centrally, we've got our creative services team. So the four floor creative, I'm sure you'll hear us talk about that a lot today. And the sort of things they do are everything creative to do with our artists. So design, uh, video production shoot production, video commissioning, analytics, CRM, insight, sync, brand partnerships, all of that cool stuff. Um, and then we also have interesting roles in finance. Uh, we have a role in HR uh, and also global digital business if you're a business analyst type person. Um, also commercial group, which is a huge part of our, our business. And um, we've got marketing roles and international marketing as well. We also have a few new roles this year, um, one of them in AWOL, one of them in the Orchard, and then also one based in Ireland as well. So that will be coming up too. Um, and, and with that, you do stay in your role for the 12 months. So it's not a rotation. You do apply to your preferred option or options, and then you're with your team for that whole year because you become so vital to that team. 
and would, they would never let you go. Um, and then throughout those 12 months, you grow and you network with your cohort and you'll be able to be a part of some amazing workshops as well um, that will kind of help you throughout your internship journey. Um, you get the opportunity to sit down and have like, Q&A sessions uh, with some of the best in the business and they're called spotlight sessions. And I'm sure the guys will tell you a bit more about those later. So that's a little bit of an overview um, in, in a few words of the, of the programme. Uh, so I will hand over to the wonderful current interns to introduce themselves. Who's it kicking off? Is it Martha? Yeah, if you can go to the next slide, please. Yeah, oh, yeah. hi everyone. <laughs> so three of us, Martha, Asma and Vanessa, we were all um, mentees at the CMN um, program before and we we're all interns this year, me and Vanessa. We're in the program last year and Asma was two years ago, if I'm wrong, I think. Um, so yeah, I can start introducing myself. You could go to, to the next slide. As you can probably hear and know by my accent, I'm not uh, English. I'm actually from Portugal. I was born, I was raised there and I lived there till I was uh, 20, 21. Um, and yeah, so basically I've always been a big music consumer and a big music fan and starting by my One Direction obsession, as you probably can see in the back or in the mug that I'm drinking tea from, um, to like Conor Maynard as well. And I've always been really involved in everything like fan related. So I had fan accounts, update accounts, and I was just really involved with music in general growing up. But then I fell in love with journalism when I was like nine and I decided, and I set on my mind that I wanted to be a journalist. journalist. So I did my undergrad in journalism in Lisbon and I loved it. And I went there with my mind straight like that I wanted to be like, an actual like reporter, like newspaper reporter. But while I was at uni, I fell in love with radio just because it had like the bit of communication that I loved and being able to talk to people. Uh, but also I could listen to music the whole day. So it's just like the best of both worlds. And I fell in love with it. And I decided that when I finished uni, I really wanted to work in radio. So I started applying for jobs and internships and I got an internship in radio production in a big Portuguese radio. And after doing that internship, my contract ended and I was like, I really want to focus on music now. So I started doing, I applied for, mar for marketing um, jobs in the music industry back home. Um, and I got this um, job in the music marketing and PR kind of like a service agency in Lisbon. And I was there for five months, I think. Then I decided that I actually really wanted to learn more about marketing. And I really wanted to fulfill my childhood One Direction fan dream of moving to London. So in 2020, in the middle of a pandemic, I decided to move to London. And I did my master's in marketing and advertisement in the University of Greenwich. And yeah, I ended it in September. I finished it in September. And after that and doing that, I was working, um, selling merch in different venues in London, like the O2, Ali Pali, uh, the Palladium, and as well being a freelancer for um, startup uh, doing marketing. And at the same time, being a mentee in the positive influence where I met my incredible mentor that I still run, like I see him across the building and I scream his name and we have meetings still. And he helped me applying for the Sony internship program. And without him, I couldn't have done it. And I said, say this every single day and without positive influence, I could have done it. And yeah, in January I started and I'm a video commissioning intern at Fourth Floor Creative, which is the creative hub at Sony Music, as Charlotte said. And now passing it to Asma. <laughs> hey, I'm Asma. Um, I am a digital marketing intern at RCA. And um, yeah, kind of similar like to, to, to Marta. I was always like, I was a fangirl growing up, but um, One Direction, Little Mix, so you know, great working at Sony now you know living the dream um <laughs> but um I basically didn't actually always think I was gonna work in music I went to uni and I did psychology for my undergrad um really liked it at first but obviously 
didn't really end up liking it by the end and by the time I finished uni I was like hmm, I don't know what I want to do and that's when I did CMM and um, obviously did the men mentorship back in 2020 um, when it was like also a lot down so it was even more daunting I did not know what I was going to do with my life <laughs> um, but um, we en I ended up doing it and it was like great eye-opening experience because I didn't know that you could like work in like there was a route into music I always just thought oh that's for people that I just already know someone that works in there like you had to be like I don't know related to Simon Cowell or something to get into music um so you know like I did not know that you could just like get get into it but my mentor really helped me and like um I really like started building up my skills and stuff like that I did actually apply for the internships back then obviously made it the next year <laughs> um so you know if, if you, just in case like you do not might, might not make it this year always try again if you really really want to do it because you never know um so yeah so then I I ended up just doing my master's instead in media communication to build up those skills and you know learn more about communications and marketing and you know the creative industries um so I did that at UAL and at the same time while I was doing uni I ended up doing some internships at like online media startups um did like social media management for them and content creation and stuff and even wrote like an article at one of the one of the um, outlets that I worked at and then at the same time I also started a music and pop culture podcast um called clued up um with my friends and that really really helped me develop my skills because running your own like thing your own project is way more like like when you can get way more out of it than than just like working for somebody else because you're really in charge of all aspects of things um so that really really developed my skills in marketing and digital especially because I was running the social media and stuff and obviously running the whole podcast with my friends so yeah that's like me in a, in a gist um but yeah now I'm here at Sony doing an internship so yeah um over to Vanessa Hi, uh, I'm the video production intern at Full Floor Creative, but before that, I always came from a creative background. I love drama. I always wanted to be in front of the screen. And then I worked out you could be behind without having to embarrass yourself. Um, so I started pursuing that. I went to uni. I studied digital media production at Oxford Brooks, but uni wasn't for me. I still, uh, I still pursued it the three years, but I worked out that I'd rather get the hands-on experience. So I started freelancing at 18 as a runner, a production assistant, a location marshal, a supervisor, COVID supervisor, researcher, you name it. I just sort of explored all the different departments. Um, eventually found out I like the producing and directing side of things. So I started creating my own content. And on my birthday last year, I actually got offered a job at BBC and Apple TV for the show called Trying. And I worked there for six months. It's coming out on July 22nd. So check it out um, if you haven't. It's a great show. A lot of drama behind the scenes, but that's what the production industry is like. Um, yeah, when I'm not working, I'm working. Um, I did two retail jobs while doing a degree and working three freelance jobs at the same time. And also doing the Creative Mental Network. Um, I think the creative mental network definitely grounded me because it showed me that I could go into a path at Sony Music where I could get everything, but also the support of a team, um, which is what I was struggling with at the moment. Um, but yeah, that's me in a nutshell, hopefully. So yeah, now we're going to talk to you about how was our experience with the recruitment process and what you can expect from it and how to prepare yourself and our like main tips uh, on it. So you can go to the next slide, please. And yeah, so basically as it's kind of a long process, worth it but long, um, there are a lot of stages to filter who's right for which role and to make sure every person that gets the role is fitted for it. Um, there are a lot of stages. And the first one is submitting the application online. So the jobs, uh, the internship uh, availability and application will be over in the website. And basically just go there, select the role you want to apply and just put your contact details. And then you put the normal CV and cover letter. And then you have some questions that you need to answer. But it's just, I think it depends on the role, the kind of questions that you answered. And it's just like, you can prepare them and just like be honest. And yeah, just tell honestly, why do you want it? And what do you know about what you're being asked? 
And you also have something that for me was really stressful, but really good to do, which is um, kind of a cover letter, but a video cover letter. So it's really interesting because I think that's where the recruitment team can actually see your personality. So yeah, um, it's basically a video where you have to explain why do you want to work at Sony? Why do you want to work in a specific uh, role? What skills you're going to bring? What skills you have? Um, yeah, it doesn't need to be just a boring video of you talking to the camera. You can be like as creative as you want, as creative as possible. You can make like a TikTok. You can make um, an animation. Just use your best skills and be creative. For example, I decided that instead of me talking about myself and being boring, um, that I was gonna let my friends tell the story of why I should work at Sony and tell the story about myself as well. So I went on my Instagram and put like question boxes and my friends had to reply like a few questions about me, like what do they see myself doing in the future? What song they associate with me? Uh, what artists do they associate with me? Um, what do they think? are my skills or like my best uh, personality trait or my worst personality trait. And then I use those answers to basically do the storyline of the video and showing up like all my friends, Instagram at saying what they thought um, the things about me were. So yeah, just try to think of something out, uh, out of the box, but show your personality and show why do you love music and why do you really want to work at Sony? And then the next stage um, I'll run through because it is a little bit different this year. So on this slide, it says uh, Spark Hire, but actually um, last year we were doing face to face video interviews that were live. Now, this year we will be um, using a tool called Spark Hire. So this is something that we have used previously for another recruitment process and it has worked really well. Um, but it's the first time for internships, so I just wanted to give you a bit of an overview from my side because um, the, the current interns haven't experienced it. Um, so what Spark Hire is, is it's a, a virtual one-way interview at all. So um, if your application is successful, you will receive a link to complete your interview. It's really straightforward um, and it, it sounds, when you think about you know recording yourself answering questions it's kind of oh, you know awkward don't really know how you're going to come across but with spark hire it really does coach you through the whole process and it gives you instructions on you know this is what you know you've got this much time to prepare i think you've actually got unlimited time to prepare for the questions that you're asked um but you've got probably four to five questions to answer and you'll probably need to do it in one go but you can re-record I think once or twice after after your answer which is also good because you can practice um, and then you can you know you, you know you're ready then to to answer each question and they will be quite general you know maybe one specific to the job uh, and your skill set um, but it won't be, you know, 10 questions. It will be four or five, quite concise. I think you get two minutes uh, maximum to answer each question as well. So that's the, the next stage that me and the talent team will then review. Um, and then in that review, that's what kind of gets you through to the next stage. If you're successful at the Spark Hire stage, that's when you get passed on to the Spotlight and Interview stage. Oh, Asma, you're on mute. I, I, I can't believe I made that mistake. I can't believe it. Um, and then you do the spotlight and the interview presentation. Um, so, yeah, first of all, the spotlight session. Essentially, it's kind of something like this right now where you get to, like, meet the team that are going to be interviewing you, get to ask them questions about the job, about themselves, about the role. Um, these, like these people could end up being your line managers because mine ended up being my line manager. So this is a great time to get to know the people that you're going to be working with day, to, day in, day out. Um, this like spotlight session, definitely use it to try and find out as much as you can about the, the role and like about the skills that, that the role requires and what they're looking for because that will help you prepare for your interview way better. Like for example, I remember asking um, 
what is your ideal intern? Literally, I was trying to ask for the cheat codes. Um, so they, like, they, they gave the answers and I was like, okay, X, Y, Z is what they're looking for. I'm going to try to show them how I have X, Y, Z skills. Um, and it will like really help you like whittle down your answers because sometimes it can be like overwhelming when you know, like you have done so many different experiences and you want to share all of them and you want to talk about all of them. But like, you have to like, you've only got, got like what 30 minutes maybe with this interview and half of it is going to be used with the presentation so you need to like get your answers narrowed down and really like know your cv so that you can like give the best concise answers that show the, yourself in the best way so the spotlight really helps with that um and then in terms of the interview like i said you do get asked questions about you know different skill sets and different examples of things but the big questions they kind of ask you are about your presentation your presentation you're going to get asked to do a task um for instance if you're doing marketing they're probably going to ask you to do a presentation about a marketing campaign or something along those lines so um so definitely be prepared um when you're presenting just make sure you know everything about for example if you're presenting a campaign make sure you know everything about that campaign or about that artist because you don't want to like you might not include everything in the presentation but make sure you kind of have all the information as your ammunition ammunition because not to scare you but they're going to try ask you a question not to throw you off they're going to ask you a question that is going to maybe throw you off but you're not it's not to throw you off it's to they want to know your opinion for instance they asked me um i did my presentation on pink panther s and about her marketing campaign and i mainly focused on talking about tiktok and stuff like that because it's pink panther s and she was huge on tiktok um but they asked me about youtube and what i would do for pink panther s on youtube and i was like really stumped at that moment but because i had really like researched pink panther s and i knew her audience isn't really a long form content kind of audience i was able to just give my honest answer and just say I wouldn't do that because I think her audience would not, you know, take to that because there are more people that take on short form content. They're not going to try and do long form, for, ex for example. So just like if you know the artist you're talking about and you know the campaign you're talking about, when they throw you questions that make you go, oh, I don't I didn't think about that. You're going to kind of be able to work out an answer on the spot because you're prepared. But don't let those kind of questions scare you because it's not really a thing where there's going to be a right or wrong answer. It's more of a thing of like they want to know your opinion um because obviously these people work in like the the industry and they work in the field that you want to get into they work in marketing they know everything way more than you but they kind of want to know your opinion and that's kind of kind of like what the role of an intern is kind of like part of it is they kind of want that fresh new perspective and they want to know your passion and they want to know your point of view um so yeah that's that's the presentation one big big also one big big tip i'll give you make sure you practice how to use teams because I did hear some stories about how people struggle to share their screen or their laptop wasn't set up for for teams so if you know anyone that uses teams if you have a friend or even maybe like if you guys were on the CMN mentorship with someone at Sony ask maybe ask for like a little catch up with your mentor before you before you uh, do your interview or something so that you can like practice sharing your screen because that's what I did um before I did my uh, my um interview as well my mentor was like do you want to do you want to do, do a test run on me and I said yes definitely so we did a little test run and I practiced sharing my screen and I found out that I needed to set on my laptop for sharing so when I got to my interview I did not have that problem so that was definitely a big big tip that I would have but yeah like definitely just enjoy the interview make the most out of the spotlight session and just be really 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 prepared for your presentation but yeah that's that stage over to Vanessa who will tell you about the final stage so the final stage is kind of like a pinch me moment because you don't believe you've gotten that far but you need to remember that you need to enjoy it because although it's the end and you don't know you're going to make it through it's not every day that you get to speak to the head of your department or the head of your like whole corporation like for me I had to meet with Cassandra Gracie and she's the president of Four Floor Creative and my mind was blown because she's a female and she's like bossing it in the industry like she's absolutely great um definitely do your research before you meet the head of your department because they will you need to be prepared for what questions you're going to ask um luckily at the time of my interview Cassandra Gracie was nominated for businesswoman of the year and so that's sort of where our conversation went down um because in my industry video production there's not many females in it um like you'll turn up to set and you'll be the only woman on set so that was a good talking point um but top tip definitely research your person come prepared with questions and be ready to answer the random questions don't be thrown off by it just embrace it and take it head on
So now we're going to tell you the top tips that we have from our experience and from all the interviews we did. And um, yeah, first of all, like ask questions and show that you're interested and show that you really want it and that you really care about the industry and that you're really informed as well about it. Um, and don't be afraid because there are no stupid questions and they'll never be. Um, so yeah, also something that I just remember while uh, Asma was talking, for, for example, for the spotlight session, keep your camera on, show that you're there, like don't hide between the camera off, like, show your face people are there to see you they want to know about you they want to talk to you so always keep your camera on and be yourself um show your best personality because you're gonna be working with those people hopefully like for one entire year so you really want to be yourself um around them uh be careful on what to wear like you don't need to be extra formal suit and tie thing, but you also don't want to be in your pajamas. So be careful with that. And always look in your junk email because sometimes you don't know where these emails are going to. So it's better to be safe than sorry. So always look in your junk email, spam, inbox, whatever, and just be patient. It's a long process as we've all, we've all said, um, but it's worth it. So just be patient, don't lose hope. And yeah, and if you don't get it this year, try again another year, the year after, look at Hasma. If you can pass to the next slide. Yeah, and now we're gonna talk to you about our day-to-days and basically, what we do in the office and out of the office. So as I said, I'm a video commissioning intern. And also when this all happened, I, I'm i not gonna lie, I also didn't know exactly what video commissioning was. So basically video commissioning is dealing with all the music videos inside of Sony from start to finish. So we are the people that talk to marketing managers, talk to the artists, talk to the management and have the idea for the music video and then contact the directors and the producers that we think would fit the artist and the idea of the music video, um, get treatments out of them, choose one of them that we think matches the artist's vibe. Of course, we always have to have the artist and their team's approval. Um, and then it's just preparing all the visual creative stuff for like the shoot to happen, being in the shoot and seeing if, for example, everything like if a pillow is in the right positioning, if, um, a little sign that shouldn't be there is there just being really careful with little things that for the normal eye you wouldn't realize to the end side of like post-production editing and just having the approval and the feedback from the artist and from ourselves to make sure the video when it's delivered is like the exactly right thing that we wanted and basically what I do is I assist all the commissioners inside um inside fourth floor and inside my team so in sony what happens is the commissioners we have a team of commissioners in fourth floor that work with all the labels where for example in other labels um and outside of sony each label has their own commissioners we work as a team and we work with all the labels which is incredible because we also meet a lot of people and i do the sign off of those music videos so whenever there's a music video inside of um, Sony, even if it doesn't have a commissioner associate, associated with it. I do the sign off of it. So it's basically dealing with all the contracts and payment to the production companies, and directors and dealing with insurance and making sure everything is ready for the shoot to happen on a certain day, uh, whether it is like with two weeks in advance or one day in advance, just have to deal with it, whatever the time they give you. And a really cool part as well, by being able to work with all the labels is that I also have creative meetings with all labels and this could be just catching up on projects or having labels for example me and um, my team and RCA's team has this team we had a meeting where we just sat there for like one hour watching random videos for like Egypt from France that were like crazy that I would never see like in the UK and like literally think about them and think about what we can grab from them and bring it to the UK, what they are being capable of doing with certain budgets and just being like, yeah, taking like creative stuff and brainstorming of what we can bring to the UK. Um, and yes, assisting commissioners with any admin requests, whether it's booking cars, whether it is like looking for sometimes like someone that can do 
something that can help us like going to the shoot or getting to a shoot or like hard drives, um, all of that admin stuff. And something really cool that I'm also um, helping doing is helping managing Fort Slow Creatives and so Sony Music UK social media accounts. For example, every week half a brainstorm for Sony Music UK TikTok account and for Fort Slow Instagram. So that is a really cool part as well because I have to know what everyone is up to and yeah just try to be creative and think okay this week like this concert is happening can we grab something from social media to post it so we have this event we have this shoot like and try to brainstorm on ideas that we can um post and show our audience and yeah in terms of skills a lot of our organization having like the separate tabs on outlook in our emails split by artist and by project and by current project and old project so you know what's happening what stage each project is time management that also correlates with working on this under pressure because um as i said i can have a request for a shoot that is the day after so and it normally takes like three or four days to make a full sign off so yeah just have to do what you have to do and if you have to work past six you have to work past six if you are, you have to have a call with la it's six for you and it's like 9 a.m for them so it is what it is and um yeah, problem solving, shit happens and you just have to deal with it and you just have to solve it and get your way around it and communicate a lot with your team and with these external people. Like, be honest and say like, we're waiting for this. We were waiting for this person's reply. Um, this needs to be done before, like just keeping everyone updated so that people are happy and just, yeah, keeping and building relationships because probably if we're doing a video we're going to work with that person or that producer that director or that production company sometime in the future so and we want to work with them sometime in the future so we have to be able to keep relationship relationships with them and just keep building it and making sure everyone is happy and everything's all right so yeah passing it on to Hasma again So, like I said earlier, I work at RCA, it's one of the labels, um, and I do digital uh, marketing. So this um, actual internship is actually a little bit different to some of the other, maybe some of the other roles in, in, the, in the company, because you're doing a bit of digital and you're doing a bit of marketing, um, which are, they have crossover, but they're quite different because you're, there's a traditional general marketing, which is like, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but all of a sudden I've completely forgot what I do. Um, and then there's digital, which is like, you know, socials and everything online. And then there's marketing, which is like more in the real world. That's a better way to explain it. It's the real world versus the online world. Um, so the day-to-day -day tasks. So you, you do various admin tasks um, to support the, the team, the marketing managers and the digital ma marketing managers. This can be like setting up meetings, um, taking minutes in meetings, raising invoices, which is probably what you're going to do the most, raising POs, um, organizing assets, planning events. Those are the kind of the ones that I've done more often, but there are always random admin tasks that you won't expect. Like there's always something new every day, which you just have never done before. And you're just going to end up doing, which is, you know, it keeps, it keeps the job fun. It keeps the job fresh. Um, you'll be supporting with like social media on the, on the, digital side you'll be supporting with social media posting so basically me and there's actually two of us that do the same internship and we both like post for the rca's um instagram and twitter and we're also starting a tiktok so follow rca on tiktok um and um we do like we do that for the actual label but then we also do help with like creating content for that the artists as well like so i pr primarily help with tiktoks for artists for some of our artists so um just help with like editing them and stuff like that um and then like carrying out research as well there is a lot of research that sometimes your marketing managers or just marketing managers want to do because they because obviously you're the like the you might be like the young buck in the in the, in the labor or in the department so you know they like kind of turn to you for like the latest kind of information and doing the latest research um i always find that my team always tried to come to me for like tick what's happening on tiktok and stuff like that so you know it's good like you're like a lot of your job is going to be like keeping up to date with a lot of things and you know knowing 
knowing what's 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 popping at the moment um <laughs> so um the skills that you're definitely going to need is being super 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 organized because obviously if you as you like what well, you might not know but music in the music industry things can change in a drop of a hat like something that was going to come out this week might not come out this week something that was going to come out next week might come out this week instead so things change it's a really really fast paced um industry and you're going to be getting a lot of people asking you a lot of things and they're all going to say it's urgent but you're going to have to be super organized and know how to juggle a few plates at once and juggle a few hats at once like especially with a with a if you're doing this role like you're doing kind of like you're working with like kind of two teams so you're going to have to keep like those two plates balanced so you're going to have to be super organized manage your time well definitely know how to prioritize you need to you need to know what goes at the top of your list and what can wait till tomorrow um so that's like the big big thing that i would say that to make that will make you a successful intern no matter what other skills you have just being that kind of like organized time like someone who's able to manage their time well able to prioritize that's going to be like the number one thing if you want to be like a successful intern at sony I think in general, um, being like working well under pressure, working at well at a fast pace is also quite important. Um, like Martha said, for example, you could you could be staying a little bit later, but like some things just like like I said, fast pace things might change at the drop of a hat. You might suddenly need to do something. So you need to be someone that's good at like working under pressure and like, keeping a cool head sorry, and just. Could you say that again? Sorry, my sorry. my Siri watch just went off. How embarrassing. Um, <laughs> um, where was I? Um, yeah, so you need to be someone that can keep a cool head. You see me working under pressure right there, the pressure of, you know. Um, but yeah, so you're someone that can work well under pressure, work at a fast pace, um, be able to be flexible because sometimes you might have, you might be asked, for example, to work an event um, or something which might be, be too late. Say yes, just do it. You're never going to experience something like that in your life. It's like these kind of events or these kind of places, you're not going to be invited to these places. Like you might never get invited to these places ever again. So definitely say yes and be flexible with your kind of like time here and there during the week. Um, and definitely, yeah, just just be open and be like, just be open to the opportunity um, and be like, just be excited to just do the job. Um, and definitely problem solving, because sometimes you're going to be stuck in situations where you don't know what you're doing. People are not responding to you. Something's going to happen and you just don't know what to do. So just definitely be someone that, you know what, can like just, find a way to find find a way without having someone telling you what to do sometimes so yeah definitely problem solving is going to be a big one communication just like Martha said just keeping people updated you're going to have people chasing you like oh why have I not been paid for something or why hasn't this happened or why hasn't that happened just if there's something blocking 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 something from happening just let them know yeah this is this isn't happening or keep your managers posted on what you're doing as well just let them know like oh yeah this I'm just doing this thing and then I'll do your task for you because if you let them know there's something more urgent that's come up, they won't they won't fight you. They're gonna they're gonna be they're gonna be like no no worries like they're not gonna they're really they're really nice people. So um um yeah so just definitely communicate your workload, communicate everything. Communication is key basically. That's the gist of it. But yeah, that is my role. Over to Vanessa. Hi, uh, so like I said, I'm the video production intern. I feel like my role is very obvious. I help with video production. Um, that can be from live sessions, music videos, content day, events, um, you name it, we do it. Um, with Four Floor, we've got this motto where it's like quick turnaround. So you might need a video in four hours, we can shoot and edit it in that time period, meaning it's very fast paced. Um, on a day to day, I liaise with labels and artist management to produce video shoots. Um, so normally you get an email being like, hey, this is the brief. Um, can you get this sorted? And you'll have to get a location, a crew together, kit, um, do the insurance, do the risk assessment, issue a call sheet. Um, but things don't always go to plan. Um, like always um people can get covid meaning that you've got less than 24 hours to find an entire new crew um but obviously everything's been paid for so you've got to be quick and also remain very calm and organized in it. um when i'm not doing that i'm creating decks for content um such as ministry of sound might want to create content for their artists um so we as a group, my team will come together and form treatments for the separate ideas that we can put on TikTok, on YouTube, and we present it to the team and they come back and we make them for them. Um, 
also like the other girl said I raise POs um, on BPAC which you'll learn is the bane of our lives it's honestly a love-hate relationship um, it never works but when it does it's nice and easy straightforward you can get through it um, I also do onboarding for people on my team so my team are the best um, I'm biased but they're great um, we have freelancers come on um, so I will put all their details in friend, send it through to HR and yeah I get to build a relationship with them before they even come onto the team so I'm kind of like the welcome um yeah what else do I do uh I work closely with artists on shoot days um this can be from taking on their riders um certain artists will have certain needs that they want um not to name any names but some people ask for a shopping list um literally milk cheese bread you name it um so yeah I also introduce myself and make sure I can get them teas and coffee and that they're comfortable um so you've got to be very professional because you're literally face to face with someone that you could absolutely love um, and you can't find girl, but you've got to be there for them. It's a weird environment. Uh, what else? I also support the social media. So on shoot days, when I'm not busy running around like a crazy woman, I'm capturing content for TikTok, uh, for YouTube, uh, for Instagram, and you've got to be quite creative with it. So it can't just be whipping out a camera and taking a shot. Um, you can interact with artists and get them to say something to the camera. Um, something that my team are really good at is they will take on board what you're interested with. So I've obviously come from a producing background and a directing background, and I've always wanted to pursue that. So they let, let me take on the more admin side and on shoot days, I've been assistant director. I've currently taken on some projects and helped produce them on my own. Um, yeah, but if you're into editing, my team will definitely take that on board and let you edit some projects which is fun. So you can kind of adapt the role to what you prefer. Um, but yeah, some of the skills that you need is organization because you're definitely balancing a lot. Like currently I've got four shoots going, but when I'm on set, I have to handle with all the admin and I have supplies emailing me like, why haven't you paid me yet? And you've got that constant conflict and you just got to keep it level headed while remaining on set and making sure stuff gets done um which is why you need to be good at problem solving communication is also key um especially on set like you've got to make sure that the artist doesn't know that things are going badly but the crew are all united and know what the hell is going on um so yeah communication is definitely key um but you've also got to be flexible unlike the other intern roles I can be on a shoot from 5 a.m in the morning and I can wrap at 2 a.m in the afternoon morning god knows um, I can also do weekends depending on what the shoot is, but I think it's definitely worth it because you get to do some really exciting things. I've done commercial shoots. I've worked with people such as Tom Grennan, Harry Styles, um, Josie, man, like you, there's a range of artists from different genres. So you get to explore genres that you're not even used to, such as Berry Tomorrow, which is like heavy metal rock um but it's always fun seeing the end product at the end um and getting to meet the band their management their label and building that communication between everyone so yeah that's a bit about my role Sorry, guys, trying to unmute myself. Um, just wanted to highlight the application window um, before we wrap up. It is the 18th of July to the 1st of August. So you do have two weeks. Now that two weeks you can spend, you can look at all the job descriptions on day one and then think about it for a week and then make your application or prepare your application for a few days. You know, you haven't got to rush. We won't close them. Um, but we will close them at a specific time. So keep an eye out for that time. It's usually either 6 p.m. or 9 p.m. on the 1st of August. Um, I believe that is actually a Monday, so yeah, it will probably be 6 p.m. Um, so yeah, that's just one thing to be aware of. Um, I also wanted to kind of wrap up and say, something about our next event but Adna did you want to go to questions now 
yeah let's let's we can do questions i think you can um yeah let's let's do questions now and then we can do um like let people know about the next session at the end oh perfect uh, can i just say something that we forgot so basically uh, a good thing about this internship as well is the fact that you actually learn a lot about the music industry and we every like two weeks i think we have like spotlight sessions with different people within the industry and we have just like sessions to learn more about different roles and what people do and it's really interesting so if you like really like the industry you yeah just know that it's not just some place where they're gonna hire you and you're just gonna be like being the <laughs> the assistant of like everyone and like doing everyone's business requests you actually have time to learn and lower i'm lower line managers are, are aware that we have this session so like it's not like no one blames us after like two hours away from our like emails to go to these sessions and we really learn about our like different roles about like different people from the industry like for example we had a session with Stacey Tang from RCA and it was just like so interesting to see how her like she she's just such a like a big female like in the music industry right now we had a session with like the, the CEO of Sony where like he wanted to know a lot about us and we also like learned a lot about him so just really good to learn as well more than just like being doing your job you're actually learning at the same time so yeah we forgot to mention that <laughs> just wanted to say that. thank you so much I also just wanted to mention as well and um, as you guys wonderfully went through your roles that wanted to say that there is a training period you don't you're never expected to do these things on day one and there is support from our like Marta mentioned our learning and development team in all kinds of things spotlights the workshops as well just helps you become a better employee um so yeah de there's there's I don't know what would you say three months guys that that you you spend getting up to speed with everything and then you can really kind of hit the ground running into the internship even now like everyone is so open that if now you still don't know how to do something you can just yeah. run to your line managers or anyone else in the com company and they'll be like free to help you yeah. yeah and just to add as well you're gonna like when when you guys start we'll be finishing so we'll we'll be able yeah. to get, like let you know everything before you start so for example when we started the, the previous interns handed everything over make sure we kind of knew everything before they went like they they might have stayed at the company or left but before they moved on so don't worry We'll, we'll hold your hand before if you do it. we'll hold your hand before you before we, we leave you okay um so we'll get stuck in with questions we've got a few questions um what i'll do is i'll just shout the question out whoever thinks it's like they can answer the question best just like interject and ask some questions i'm assuming are going to be tailored towards like um a specific intern with interns some of them are more like hr questions so charlotte you can you can answer those um cool so <clears throat> i'll start from the top the first question is um it's a really good question can you apply for more than one position i'll take this one because uh, i get asked this all the time yes you can absolutely there's nothing stopping you on the system from applying to every single one but I would recommend not doing that. I would recommend choosing your favourite two or three, ones that you can really apply yourself to. Um, it's not going to make loads of sense if you're going for a digital marketing role and a finance role, unless, you know, you've got experience to support both. You know, you really want to tailor your application to the one that you want. Because when a hiring manager sees your application, they're going to think, wow, this person really wants this job and they're so right for it for X, Y and Z. Um, and if you've done that for every single role or, you know, I don't know, five or six, it's going to be a little bit lost in your application of where your motivation is. So that's my recommendation. I'm sure there's lots of people that will apply for all of them still. <laughs> Perfect. OK, the next question is, is there an age requirement? Um, 18 you have to be over 18 cool um the next question is do you consider someone from uh someone for more than one position if you think their skills might fit a better role i mean is better fit for another role yes but 
that's another thing so um don't don't assume that that will happen if you really want a role and you think you're a good fit for it apply for it you know even if it is more than three that you think you you are great for just go for it because there are going to be thousands and thousands of applications and little old me going through them all you know being able to do that kind of swap um that that kind of happens later on in the in the process so if you've done an interview and we think oh actually this person would probably be better suited to this team that's kind of when that happens rather than at the application stage if that makes sense um another question is obviously everyone applying is interested and passionate about music but how do you know but how do you best express that passion for music in the initial application without explicitly saying i love music it's a really good question I saw this question as it was popping up and I found it so hilarious because I actually thought the same thing when I applied. I'm like, how, how, how do I say this? How do I say I love music without, without saying I love music? Um, but I think it really shows in like giving examples and like telling a story kind of thing. Um, like, for example, Marta said at the beginning, she said, I've always been involved in music. I've always been a fan. I've been a fan girl. I, for example, if you like ran a Twitter account, that is something that shows your passion. If you... For example, for me, I started a podcast just because I love music so much. I love talking about it so much. I started a podcast. Like those things, those examples of things that you've done outside. It doesn't necessarily have to be work experience you're talking about. This could be something like a little side project, a little something that you did on the, just to show like you might have started a blog about music. You might have started an Instagram page. You might have, you know, you might be like, you could, you could show in your creative, in your creative like video cover how many gigs you've been to this year. Like find ways just find the ways and examples in your life like you don't necessarily have to be like oh I worked I did internship in music or I did something directly like professional in music just like just even you just being being a fangirl of one direction and having a, an update account will, will will let people know yeah she, she's passionate about musical he's passionate about musical they're passionate about music so yeah that's just, just 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 those kind of like extra things that you've done on the sides those will show yeah and it's like don't be ashamed of that because I feel like there's still like a big stereotype with those kind of things um, when there's literally no need. Um, don't be afraid of, for example, I literally have my CV that I did a campaign when I was 12 for Conan Maynard and I have that saying in my CV. So when I was 12, I was getting nothing, obviously, because I was 12. And just because I was passionate and just because I really liked it, I decided to create like this movement. It didn't this like kind of like marketing campaign for him, for him back in Portugal. And I think that shows that I'm like I actually enjoy it so like even when I was 12 I was doing it without obviously getting any money or like being getting anything from it so yeah don't be ashamed of talking about or putting in your in your CV having fan accounts or going to like gigs in your free time all those kind of things and just to add as well those fan accounts don't even have to have thousands of followers it could be an account that you've been running since 2010. They could have 200 followers. Like, for example, for me, I've had a YouTube account since I was 12 as well. It has 200 subscribers, but I still posted on it up until, like, I was 20 because I was that, like, and I used to talk about, like, I used to talk about Lil Mix on it. Just, like, those kind of things that like, will show, like, you are, like, like, even if it doesn't have followers, it will show even more that you're passionate because you're not giving up because you don't have followers. You're just doing it because you love it kind of thing. So just even if you don't, like, even if it's something you start today before the application starts, it just shows your passion. Like, it shows, like, have an outlet kind of thing. Like, that's what I'm just trying to say. Sorry. Sorry for interrupting. Oh, those are great answers. Thank you so much. Um, the next question is, will there be tips on cover letters in the next session? This for you, Charlotte. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to go through all of that nitty gritty stuff um, when it comes to CVs, cover letters, uh, what to prioritise. So ask more questions about the interns experience now because we'll dive into all of that stuff next week or the week after whenever it is on the 13th 13th yeah so that's not next week is that next week that is next week that's next week wednesday um sadiq your question is related to cover letters and stuff so i definitely would go to the next session on 13th um wherever you kind of found the link to this that uh, there'll be another link for um the next session um another question for you charlotte is what is the rate of interns becoming permanent um so it varies year to year um and there's never 
a set amount it really does depend on what is available so if there's an assistant role that comes up in the time that you're either coming to the end of your internship or you know even at the very end you have different situations in in that case so you might get to the end of your internship and there isn't a role available in your team but there's a role available in the company that would be a good fit like if you've got transferable skills um and that is something that i manage so if something junior comes up in the company around that time i'd say probably from november december onwards i will make sure that every intern gets that message and has the opportunity to put their name in the hat um so that's one way uh, and then if if a role comes available you're able to apply to it sometimes you might get you know just kept on as permanent if 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 that's possible so we don't have a percentage of how how many get kept every year it does vary but we do try and retain as many people as possible because we spend 12 months training you the aim is not to just release you into the wild we want to keep your talent um and and that is important to us so don't think that you know you will be you won't be kicked out in the cold um and and even if there isn't a role available or suitable you will get the support from me and my team when it comes to recruitment how to apply for jobs using your new skills and you know kind of doing this again but in a, a, a more mature form. Cool. Um, two questions in one, another one for you, Charlotte. If you are straight out of university, would that be an issue? Are degrees necessary? And the next one is, are there any grades you need to have to apply? What was the last bit? Sorry, Adna. Um, so I'll just read both of them. So the first one is, if, if you are straight out of university, will that be an issue? um it are degrees a necessity and the next one is are there any grades you need to have to apply okay interesting question the answer is no i don't need to know if you well i don't need a degree you you don't need a degree to get this internship at all um there are no set education requirements for this it really is about what you can do and if that means you've been to uni that's not saying that that's not valid. You know, you can pull all of that experience and knowledge that you've gained at uni and apply it to your to the role that you're going for. Um, but if you haven't been to uni, that is equally as acceptable. Um, as long as you have got, I'm not going to say you just need passion because it is a competitive process. You do need to have a little bit of evidence of your passion um, like the guys are talking about if it is a YouTube channel if it is a social media page if you've helped your friends uh, who are artists with their marketing or anything else with their videos that is experience that counts so that's what we care about and that is what we're going to dive into in the next session so I won't talk too much about it now um, but that is the important thing is the way that you apply your knowledge and your experience to the job that you're going for um whether that be from your personal experience or university that doesn't matter cool um just to let you know Luana sorry I thought you said university but you put college in the American sense because I saw a degree um sixth form would be exactly the same thing like I'm assuming Charlotte like if you just finished yeah. sixth form as long as you're over the age of 18 you're good yeah, absolutely 100 percent perfect um Okay, another question. So do you have any advice about standing out when reapplying? I got quite far in the process last year. I want to make sure that I show how I've developed in the past year. So that's a question for you, Charlotte, and also Asma, who reapplied. Asma, probably be a good one to answer this. Um, but if I think if you have gotten quite far last year, you have got through a huge chunk of applications to get to where you were in that process so you kind of understand what needs to be done so apply that to your new experience you know display that in the best way that you know you've gone away and worked on yourself and you're able to come back and you know you're ready for this now um and that doesn't mean to say that you need loads of experience to do this internship. I want to keep repeating that because it's not the case. Um, it's sometimes it is a, 
a tough decision for hiring managers to make and we do turn down as so many talented people um that sometimes trying it again is can be you know just the same as the year before and it's successful so it is a tough one um but like I say if you've got through an already tough process to, to a to a stage that is you know you've whittled you've been whittled down to a smaller group then that's that's something um that you you need to bear in mind and, and keep keep doing for this year but Asma have you got anything to add to that definitely retweet everything you just said but also maybe like just just really share that like you've definitely done more in the last year than you when you applied last time around just make sure that you've kind of shared that like re, like make sure you keep reiterating re reiterating that in your interviews and you obviously know a lot more um and you, you already you've already got the cheat codes you already know how how the how the process goes so you just you you know where you like you like you can just analyze where you where you went wrong try and see like where you might have just like maybe if I just did a little bit more research maybe if I had said my answer like this maybe if I showed just was more relaxed or or maybe if I just you know sorted out my teams like it could be something little that might have just like if you just do it like but slightly better next time you'll be you'll be there like and yeah like for me like I, I didn't even get that far the first time around because I didn't I, I know I didn't have the, enough experience and I was kind of like one of those people that applied for loads and just didn't know like where my focus was so maybe it might even be like you just got focus on like, like really what you want and really be able to explain why you want this particular internship um and yeah like just yeah you know you know the you know, you know the the tricks now so you can you can get to the final stage and get the job now. I can I believe in you whoever you are <laughs> um the next question thank you is for all three of you what was what has been your favorite part of the internship so far for me is just having like the cohort of like interns in general because like I feel like in other experiences that I had I was doing it by myself uh, and I was doing like starting the job by myself going to getting to know my team by myself and here like you have like 20 people doing everything with you at the same pace as you and like you get like free gig tickets and you can go with your friends and you actually like form relationships with them. And also of course, like getting to work with like your favorite artists. Like I have like one of my favorite artists is Mimi Webb. And it was just like, I've since I've been in the internship it was like full circle moment as well because I saw her in like one of her first gigs, like mini mini venue like 100 people I think in London and then the first week I started my internship my team was recording her last music video and then seeing everything coming together and then seeing her at the office just like full circle moment but yeah I think the main one is like having people that are going through the same thing as you um, um. <laughs> you go Vanessa okay um I definitely think it's getting to work with my team like it kind of feels surreal because we work with freelancers and one of the freelancers I've been following for a while um I liked his work and now I get to work on music videos with him and my team have been really supportive like I started the internship quite shy um very reserved and I think now I'm super confident like I can walk into a show and tell 20 people what to do where to go I can also help produce a shoot on my own. Um, I would like six months ago, I wouldn't have been able to spend an entire day with steps and get them to A and B and make sure they were ready and there. So yeah, definitely working with my team. Um, what about you, Asma? Um, definitely the same as them too. I really love working with the interns and my team, especially like, some of the people I work with have worked on some of my favorite marketing campaigns ever. So it's like, whoa, it's like a pinch me moment. You're like, I was here fangirling at the stuff you 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 came up with, the ideas you came up with for, for a campaign that I was obsessed with. So that's kind of like a pinch me moment. But like one of my actual other favorite things, just to be different, um, is like working on Cat Burns. Um, that if you guys know the song Go, that's like been on TikTok for like the last six months going crazy. Um, like working on that campaign was so crazy for me because 
when I started, I was already like a, quite a bit of a fan of Cat Burns. And then the song started going up in the charts while I like I was an intern. So like it was kind of like everything was very reactive in this campaign. So it was really like fun for me to see it from like, it was like not even in the top 40 and all of a sudden it was like number two in the charts and, and it's still in the charts, like in the top 10 right now. So that campaign was really crazy for me because I kind of saw it from like, it's like inception to like where it is now. So that was, that's been my favorite bit so far. Perfect. This is a question for you, Charlotte. What is the difference between a marketing and a promotions internship at Sony? Oh, great question. So a marketing internship is <clears throat> when you, well, I mean, like as I was saying, you know, you've got traditional marketing and digital marketing. And usually I think the intern roles very much mesh the two together. And that is things that you see social media, you've got like campaigns, you know, ideas that are going to promote your, the, well, the artist's music. What are those ideas? You know, that can be TikTok, that can be through Instagram, that can be through paid advertising, that can be uh, events that, well, I suppose, events on, on some level. And so many, it can be lots of different things, marketing, but what can promote your artist music. And promotions, while the title sounds very similar to that, promotions is everything to do with things like radio tv um what else am i thinking of radio and tv um playlists uh streaming all of those things how can you get the artist music out into those media outlets so how do you get your artist onto the jonathan ross show or um with um I was going to say Paul O'Grady. That's not who I'm thinking of at all. <laughs> what am I thinking of? The um, Saturday or Friday night show? Graham Norton? Graham Norton. Sorry, mind blank. Paul O'Grady used Graham to have people on there back in the day. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Show my age now. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, so all of those things and connecting with people like radio pluggers and playlist pluggers. Of how do I get? my new artist onto this really cool playlist and how far up in the playlist can they be you know um figuring out that so that, that that's the sort of difference um of those two and I think when the jobs open on the 18th check out the job descriptions and really understand the requirements for both now both of them are very in the internship sense very admin heavy um so there that's the kind of fundamental thing but your knowledge uh, and understanding and passion kind of has to be a little bit different um, and another big thing for promotion is press so anything written or online um how can you get your artist featured in i don't know enemy or any big magazine like that that is a, a huge focus for for that teams those teams right um, but the next question is like a simple one, Charlotte. Um, do you get paid? <laughs> yes, absolutely. You get paid London living wage and it is salaried. So you get paid every month. Um, another question, I guess like we've gone through this, but um, if anyone else has any more like top tips for getting through the application process. Mm, you guys go because you did it. Um, oh no 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 go ahead um I, I would say like like Charlotte said maybe just choose one or two just because um knowing knowing what you want to do is going to be really really key into like bringing uh, your passion across um if you're passionate about marketing and you want to you're passionate about you know marketing campaigns or stuff like that just like that like focus definitely focus on the marketing roles you might be able to apply more than one marketing role but like focus on the type of that like focus on one type of role because I feel like that's why I went wrong the like the year before when I applied um I was I kind of went a little bit all over the place so maybe just like yeah focus on one type of team you want to be on and what type one type of like field you want to be in um but yeah just show your passion show show right like you just gotta you know put it all out there but oh and your cv make your cv creative that's another thing sorry make your cv creative if you want to put a link in there put a link in there to your like stuff you've done before definitely do that um because you, obviously you're working in a creative industry you're working in a world where you know you can't have a boring black and white cv definitely you know add a bit of color pop a color um and yeah just 
show your personality. Like mine, I made it purple because purple is my favorite color. So just the, just the little details help, I guess. <laughs> Perfect. Um, anyone else have any tips? I do, yes. Sorry, I know I said I'd let you guys speak, but I was just thinking of some there. Um, one theme that runs through all of the internships is you are supporting your team. So admin is something you're going to be doing every single day and making this apparent is important. So we don't want to hire marketing directors into these internships. We want people that are going to relish the opportunity and learn, but having that base knowledge of admin and being able to support people is, is really important. And that doesn't mean to say you have to be an office assistant in your previous job or be employed, you know, talk or, or display, show us how you have got admin, uh, admin skills. That might be through uni, that might be through organizing your own projects, that might be through organizing your friend's big group holiday on a spreadsheet, you know, things like that. You need to think outside of the box of how you can apply that experience. Um, and the same goes with, you know, when you are actually applying is pulling things that might not necessarily be obvious to the naked eye when it comes to displaying your skills. Like, you know, if you don't, if you aren't able to say that you've had an admin job before um, or a marketing job before, but you have created ideas for, I don't know, the cafe that you work in you know oh how can we sell this product a little bit more things like that thinking outside the box pulling that in to the the application is is kind of I think what makes you stand out a little bit more cool um someone asked if there's an application fee I mean there isn't <laughs> it's like free to apply to no. <laughs> um okay another question is um about the presentation i know there was something mentioned about analytics could you go into further detail about what is involved or roles similar to an analytics role as a job role along with the others such as marketing and hr etc cetera, etc cetera? absolutely sorry if i'm hogging this q a guys but i just thought it might be easier for me to um spill the beans on that so analytics is is a great one because with that role you you convince people to do things with data um and and that is presenting you know you you'll be given something like here's a data set you know tell a story with it or let us know what is the best decision to do um and the 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 thing about these these tasks is there isn't really a right or wrong answer. It's really understanding about how you think and how you, how you, I guess, problem solve and pull together a story. So um, that's kind of the, the analytics one, but also the marketing campaigns, they probably will involve some analytics in there as well if you really want to impress Um because it's a, such a huge part and the analytics team partner with the marketing teams and the labels and you know help make decisions to move forward and you know what went wrong last time what can we do better next time when we're working with cat burns or you know what what can we tap into where it where are where are trends happening at the moment for this artist that we can get involved in um and that's sort of what analytics do uh in terms of the task the yeah I, we I can't really tell you what the task will be because that will be unfair um, and people will be able to prepare for you know two months which wouldn't be fair but um did that answer the question I feel like I've rambled then hi sorry um I, I do uh, appreciate your answer um about this because that's something that I wanted to do um obviously I, at the start when I was working for Sony doing the whole um uh, the whole workshop for the uh, 12 weeks this was like a while ago um mm -hmm. I wanted to do something a lot more creative back then but as COVID had happened and whatnot um it had kind of changed my perspective on what I wanted to do um for like you know going down the line later on in life you know thinking about um lifelong goals and just what the end goal is so mm -hmm. I think obviously analytics isn't that 
uh, I wouldn't have thought of it to be as a creative kind of role as you know others like marketing or um or uh, what's it called just like the other creative roles so I think that's put a, it's put a really good perspective for me so I think just trying to now understand how am I going to be the competition when it comes to applying for um that kind of role love that that's great and I mean ladies you might be able to shed more light like do you work with the analytics team often in your roles I do <laughs> sorry yeah uh, I do um we especially when we start with like a new signing um we look at like we give the analytics there's, well there's an analytics team and there's an insights team so they kind of work together the analytics are like the numbers people the insight team are like people that give context to those numbers um and they like they help us like understand where the, like this artist audiences can be um and who like what kind of audiences we want to target um like we recently did that for one of our artists and, and like a new signing and um yeah it kind of like they gave us a breakdown of like what kind of well the insights team gave like took the numbers took the took the information that we gave them like we, the people that kind of we thought we wanted to target and told us okay so these are the kind of artists that are similar to the artists you've got um the audience that listen to them and would like I'll be a fan of them or shop at these places and um use these um um plat social media platforms and are interested in these things so yeah so we do work especially with the labels like they kind of they're part of the full full of creative so they kind of help the labels understand the artist audiences and like their social numbers and their spotify mm -hmm. numbers and like they're one of the part of the analytics teams is they send us like a report every day about what tra of our tracks are like going up on tiktok and stuff like that so that's kind of like what the analytics role kind of i feel like is from someone that works definitely, with them. definitely say it's creative as well all right you say it's less creative I think creative can mean different things and and there's definitely creative thinking in in all of the roles um so yeah great I'm glad we've clarified that for you um another question Charlotte is um does this year fall in the year of industry like if someone was at university and they wanted to do a year of industry so I don't think so just because that's September right I think yeah. September to yeah. January. September so we can't alter the dates of the starting, um, unfortunately. So it would have to be after your degree or if you deferred a year. I don't know how that works, but you do have to be available for those 12 months. Uh, what are the uh, months? Sorry, uh, I, I didn't catch the beginning. So The months, did you say? Yeah. yeah. January to January. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, another question is hearing from interns, it sounds like you all had some specific work, ex previous work experience. I was just wondering if not having specific experience in the industry puts you at a disadvantage or if transferable skills from other industry industries are just as beneficial. I can talk about this because I'm doing video commissioning and I've never worked with video before, but it's showing that other things you did in your past experience can actually be transferable skills to the role you're applying to and showing, for example, you're able to adapt to using like new pro programs and new platforms and you're able to manage stress and manage like a lot of like working on pressure. It's just like it doesn't need to be to that role specifically, in my opinion. I think you can even like retail job and retail work, you can use that and bring like adapt your skills that you gain in those experiences to what you're doing in the internship and just to like add to that like just to make you guys read really like an example like one of our friends that is on the internship with us right now hasn't had any music experience beforehand and like came straight out of uni and worked in retail like so there are examples of people who have managed to get on the internship without having like a specific like music experience or marketing experience or that specific experience so it just depends how you sell yourself and like how you can show that you'd be a best fit for the role perfect um how ooh, i've already done that one that one um doo -doo. do you have any remote work or work from home 
roles within or um, is it a case of travel to the office? It is a case of being in the office, you know, I mean, it's very flexible. We do have hybrid working for sure, but you will be required to be in the office at some point in the week. Um, and it's important for your development as well that you are a part of the, the buzz and with your team and collaborating. Um, I know it's tough because, you know, it's a shame that there aren't multiple Sony music locations in the UK. Um, and it is focused around London. I understand that is difficult for people to access, um, but it is just the way that um, the setup is currently. So it can't be fully remote, but there is definitely opportunity to be flexible and, you know, work from home. I work from home a lot. Depends on your role, depends on like what your situation is. Like Vanessa will be out on shoots quite a lot in the week. So if she needs to be at home one day to recover and rest um, and be on her laptop at home, then that's fine. But, you know, if if Marta and Asma have got artists coming in for meetings, they'll have to be there for that to make sure that they're a learning, but also, you know, making sure that they're fulfilling their role as well. I think you'd feel like that um, you want to be in the office. For example, most of the, th the teams only have to be like two or three days uh, in the office, but we normally end up being like every single day um, as interns because we just want to take advantage of that and be able like to work with each other. And yeah, I think it's actually valuable to be in the office and we enjoy it so yeah um, like I, I was gonna add to what Marta said you're gonna want to be in the office anyway because it is actually for lack of a better word a vibe um so you're gonna like really just enjoy it and enjoy being there I'm usually there five days a week today's the first day I've worked from home in ages so yeah you're just gonna want to be there because it is just a, a quite exciting place and there's always something going on in that building um Okay, Charlotte, another question um, that has come up quite a few times is, if you're 17 right now, obviously you can't apply, I'm assuming, so you'd have to apply next year, isn't it? Um, it, it depends when you're 18. So if you're 18 by January, that will be fine. Um, but there will be a question on the application that will ask you, will you be 18 in January? So as long as you're clicking yes there, then that's fine um but yeah it is a case of having to be 18 by then cool um okay so only got time for one more question there is one question that was tailored towards coming from portugal alexandra so i definitely marta put her um contact details at the bottom so i'll definitely reach out to her so you can have a conversation okay. about that um the last question is um again sorry I've just like scrolled somehow um okay perfect so the last question is with regards to the marketing side of the internship would that apply to someone that's trying to make it as a musician and help applying marketing skills learned in the internship hmm I would say in this role or in these internships and please do jump in guys if you have anything to add um there are so many people trying to get these jobs that want the job to be in that role and that you know there are lots of people that do music on the side and you know might go on to become the next Harry Styles um but it is important that this is your kind of first choice in in the in life just because people that are going to hire you want that to be the case and they want to hire people that are 100 percent. and if you go in there and say I'm using this internship to help my music career or get signed then they they probably won't proceed with your uh, application to be honest and just to add like the marketing role sometimes it's very much you're not always doing but about maybe 60% of the time, you're not always doing direct the marketing stuff. You're always just doing like more than most of the time you're doing the stuff that supports, like that might be raising invoices. Like you could have a day where you're basically just sorting out all these invoices that you get. So unless you're really, really passionate about working in marketing and you're kind of like, you know what, this is, this is the way to get me into marketing. And that isn't your number one passion. You might hate it. 
so like for me I enjoy it because I know that I can see the bigger picture and I'm like you know that's what I want to do and I love the fact that I'm supporting these marketing campaigns if you're someone that's kind of just doing it as like a this is the kind of like a side hustle to my main hustle you might end up kind of like being like oh my god I this is this I hate this kind of thing so definitely if you're you're okay with doing the the admin stuff and you're really like happy to just like because this is like your career path this is the starting point then yeah don't I don't know if I don't know if, if this is the right role for you but good luck <laughs> um thank you so much I know some of you have had questions um if you've got any questions that weren't answered um you can email them to me I'll put my email in the chat um and I can pass them over to the relevant person and Marta can you just really put like asthma and Marta and Vanessa's details in there so you can reach out to them um but yeah I'm gonna pass over to Charlotte to close off the session talk to you about the final session that we've got Yes, that is my face. Um, so we have got another event, which is really exciting. And um, I'm going to be talking you through all the ins and outs of the application. So what we want to see, what we don't want to see, and what you can do to get your best self across into an application. This is a really good time to ask me questions um, like we've done today. Sorry, I know I've answered a lot of questions today um but it is you know I guess when your eight months of your working year is internships um I am the expert so make the most of that uh, it is on the 13th of July at 6 p.m so same time on Wednesday the 13th um and yeah hopefully you've all signed up for it already um it's yeah very very helpful I, I was actually talking to a current intern Sanj and she said that she would have applied completely differently without this session um, and she ended up obviously getting the job so please do please do come to it because I'd love to yeah help out and answer any questions that you've got. Thank you so much, Charlotte, and thank you to Marta, Vanessa, and Asma for their time. Um, thank you for everyone for like spending a portion of your evening with us. Um, hopefully, you guys have learned a lot. Um, definitely, sorry, I know there was loads of questions, but we have come with time, so just email them to me or reach out to other people in the chat. But yeah, thank you so much. Um, it, yeah, thank you. Basically, I don't know. I keep like rambling now. Um, I hope you guys enjoy your evening, and hopefully, see you in the next session. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye.